All right, so as you probably noticed, that video cut out. Fucking <laughs> time limit on my phone. I can only record up to 20 minutes per recording on my phone. Now, he can't remember what he was saying at the end of that video, so we're going to jump into something else on dumb kids. No, we're not really going to talk about dumb kids. <laughs> um, what we're going to be talking about is obtaining water. That is one of your most priorities that you need to do. Now, there are several ways to do this, apart from one that we don't know if it's actually possible, and that's the seawater. Now, we don't know if seawater is actually filterable, but we know that you can evaporate the water into uh, steam, and steam eventually goes into water again. Now, we don't know if that gets rid of the salt out of the seawater, but it's a possibility. I will have to look that up, and I will let you know in the description of the video. Now, what are the ways that we can obtain water. You got rain, right? You've got digging, you've got uh, plants, you've got streams, streams, pre-existing water. Because even if there were a zombie apocalypse, the ecosystem will continue to work as it should, if not better, when its humans are basically obliterated and not fucking up the planet. Exactly. So you'll find that things will start to, maybe even cities and things will start to form their own lakes and things like that, but it, that would take many, many years. Now what you could do is you could try and build like a, a well sort of system to collect water, which works a bit like a dike does for a farm. Now that would allow you access to what would be water, but it still needs filtering and it will still need everything like your parasites and everything killing through boiling. But it still gives you the opportunity to obtain and harvest water on a renewable scale without kind of having to wait constantly for rain. It also means that you can sort of store it and if you do it work good enough, you'll find that you might be able to make it last over what could be a possible drought season, which we have in UK, which doesn't tend to be too bad. Mm. I mean, in America, I'm not really sure how they're going to manage that because of, you know, they have massive drought seasons. Of where like they go can go three or four months without any rain. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah. So and another way of getting it is snow. If you live somewhere where it's like constant no snow, like Alaska, then you are laughing because you are sorted for water. All you got to do is boil the snow, and there's your purified water that is completely drinkable at any time. Uh, also, if you're in a season place like I am, then we get like next to no snow ever <laughs> <No>. <laughs> i mean we go through whole the whole winter with literally like what uh not e not even a centimeter of snow so you will find that once we stop using um power plants power plants things like that that the temperature will yeah. get colder which can actually help to get that snow mm. which is pretty helpful actually now, also, there is another problem that you could end up with because you need power for a lot of things. Now, obviously, power is not a main source because you can actually live without the power. You don't need electricity whatsoever because you can just you can see through uh, fires, uh, candles, and stuff like that. Now, there is a way of making your own candles so you don't have to always scavenge it. Do you know how to make candles? Candles? Yeah. You use a pre-existing candle. Or digging crown, or animal fat. Making a candle. Not really sure. I've got many ways of making stuff burn. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyone can like make a candle. Burn. <laughs> now, if you're going to burn paper, you're completely screwed because eventually you will run out. <laughs> but you do need to be able to make a candle or get in some form of wax to burn because wax will burn for like hours. Um, so you don't really need electricity to be able to cook or anything like that because you can just but do camping. If you know how to camp, you are in the perfect situation that you could ever be in. That's campers know how to survive. Real campers. I'm on about real campers, guys, not fucking RV bullshit camping. That, to me, is not camping. One man, one tent kind of camper. <laughs> now, obviously, I used to go camping with my friends, so we already know all about camping and all this. And we used to go... Now, obviously, we're not too far out of civilization, and we could literally just walk out of the forest to go get some water or something. But we wanted to do real camping, and we decided to use the stream that we was next to and gather some firewood and all this. Wood will be an important source. You will need it. So you've got to make sure it's always at hand whenever you need it. So if you've got something, chop the fuck out of it. So get an axe. 
And actually it's also good to use on zombies. Mm. You'll also find that mm. there's a lot of materials which you will not notice in your everyday life. E.g. if you if we broke into the flat next door, we could pull up the floorboards, we could take everything that we possibly needed if we were working on a project. Mm -hmm. E.g. if we were trying to build a barricade down on the street so cars couldn't get by. That is one thing could, you do need to do. We could rip apart the flats next door, uh, get into those, they'll probably be clear, there isn't many people in them as there is I'm anyway. I'm going to show them out the window what it actually looks like yeah. for a flat. For us, it's actually really pretty easy to survive in any zombie apocalypse because of the location we live. Now this is the back of my yard. That is my height. Now, no zombies getting up here unless they use the stairs. Or if they use each other to climb up on. <laughs> like brains. You know, but they don't have any. Um, now, as you can see, we have a lot of buildings out there that is easy for us to scavenge. And I also live next door to a church. <laughs> so we've got that as well. Cause we can just take the benches and chop all that up and we've got wood. Um, or if you find that you've got some religious people in your group, you could always leave that safely for them there and, you know, you can keep them happy too. Um, but I generally don't yeah. carry religious nuts with me, so... <laughs> now, I don't mind religious people. I mean, I'll have them in my group, but if they're, like, completely it's crazy... extreme religion, which yeah. is the problem in these sorts of scenarios. Yeah, that, yeah I, I will leave them out of my group and I will not actually help them. No. Because I will not be dealing with extreme religion or nationality. I don't care where you're from. If you're nice to me, you can join my group. And you know what? I don't mind trying to help you survive. But if you're not nice, then go fuck yourself. Pretty much. That's just simple. Now you can see we have a lot of houses and we have a lot of cars. And I'm pretty sure I know a lot of people that know how to scrap a car. <laughs> so it's actually easy for us to survive. Now, I don't, if you, I don't know if you can see, but... I'm in one flat and I'm, I've got like six separate flats going that way and I've got another flat next door that way. So we are actually sorted. We could either take to these places and um, gather all the stuff from those flats if we needed to, like floorboards, carpets, uh, anything, their food, everything. Or we've got another solution and just get a sledgehammer and bash through those walls. Wouldn't advise this... that too much. You do not know how much about structurally about buildings. Exactly. Yeah. If, <laughs> unless you're an architect, then if you think it's possible to stand, then do it. But if you feel as if you're a complete ground floor surrounded by zombies, there's a horde, which I don't really think we'll get in this area because, you know, there's barely enough people living in this area to cause a horde. So, like, but if you did, you could feel as if moving through a wall might be a good idea of getting away. And then if the building behind you collapses, so be it, you know, there's only zombies underneath, all your hard work goes with it, but, you know, you're alive. Yeah, survival is key. Doesn't matter how much you lose in the process of this survival.